G'day, my name's John McKenzie, and this is a TOAS presentation uh, for the paper Anytime Ranking on Document Audit Indexes, and this is work done with Matthias Petri and Alastair Moffat. So what is an Anytime Algorithm? Imagine that you're trying to draw a picture of Spider-Man. So someone says you only get 10 seconds. In this case, it took 12 seconds, but nonetheless, here's what you get. But what if you had a minute? Okay, that looks a bit better. And what if you had 10 minutes? Okay, that looks even better. So essentially, an anytime algorithm, you can terminate it at any time, but the quality of the result will improve as uh, the amount of time the algorithm runs uh, increases. So how we relate this back to our work? Well, let's talk about some preliminaries first. We're talking about inverted indexes here. So essentially... What a large scale search system does in a very simplistic manner is you take documents from the World Wide Web, um, you crawl them, those documents get put in a doc store, an indexer will come along, read those documents, uh, build some postings lists and store those in an index. And then a user query can come in via some user interface into our query engine which interacts with the index and rapidly matches and ranks documents uh, of interest to the user. And typically what we do is we deploy search systems in a multi-stage retrieval system. So we have uh, essentially a number of stages where the complexity and the cost increases as you work your way up uh, through the stages. And the first stage is called candidate generation. The main idea of this stage is to rapidly find a large set of possibly relevant documents. So this can be with uh, simple algorithms like Boolean conjunctions or um, rapid top K, you know, disjunctive bag of words ranking, for example. And then you have a number of filtering and re-ranking stages, which will take sort of bits and pieces of the, the previous stage, re-rank those and pass those along. So candidate generation, you get a ranked list of docs, you go up a level, in the hierarchy, you might look at just a subset of those documents. You can re-rank them according to that model, and then you can pass up another subset of documents. They get re-ranked, and so on and so forth. And so we know that end users, uh, the users who use our search engines, they're very sensitive to latency. And so how do we stay within our time budget? So what we can do is we can apply service level agreements, or SLAs, and what that would look like is that each level or each stage of the search system will have some specified latency which must be uh, essentially met. So here we're saying that we need a P99 of less than 100 milliseconds for um, the L0 or L1 candidate generation stage. And what that means is that only one in 100 queries can exceed 100 milliseconds or that 99 out of 100 must be uh, faster than 100 milliseconds. And then if we specify these SLAs at every stage, we essentially can keep a lid on the overall worst case scenario latency of our search engine. So as we were talking about before, candidate generation is the focus of this paper. And candidate generation says, given some query queue, I want to find an initial rank list of K documents to pass up to the re-rankers. And there are different ways of storing uh, inverted indexes. So here we have an impact audit index and these already facilitate any time retrieval because what they do is they pre-compute the impact for every uh, term in the index and they organize the index by impact. So for the term by here, there is a set of documents, document two, four, seven, 11, and 12. They have an impact of three. There are another set of documents, five, six, nine, and so on they have an impact of one. And if you do this for every term in the index, what that allows you to do is process from highest to lowest impact and you can terminate at any time, right? So for this particular query by Raspberry, you process five first, these documents, and then four, and then three, and then one, and then one. But the more commonly used approach for inverted indexing is the document audit index. In the document audit index, we instead have pairs um, of document ID 
and payload or impact, or it could be a term frequency, for example. But essentially, we store these pairs, and these pairs are stored monotonically increasing on the document identifier. So we have document 2, document 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 12, and so on. And so if you have a document audit index, um, you can do efficient query processing. For example, this query here, best coffee in Melbourne or best coffee Melbourne, it's very fast because you've got a short list uh, and you know a couple of long lists, so you can get through it pretty quickly. But if you have a query like this one, best car in world, um, with lots and lots of long, dense postings lists, that might take a lot longer to process. So here's an idea. What if we terminate early? So here's another difficult query, to be or not to be. Um, let's say we start at zero milliseconds, we run for 25 milliseconds, and we've got through some portion of the index. We run for another 25 milliseconds to take us up to a total of 50, and we've got through a bit more, so on, so forth. Let's say now we're at our budget, we're at 100 milliseconds, we can't do any more processing. Look at all of these unprocessed documents here, right? So if there are any good quality documents out here in the end of these lists, we've missed them, and that might be detrimental to our search quality. So in this work, we try to bring in any time retrieval into this type of document ordered index. And so what we do is we modify the index. And the question is, what if we knew where the good documents were? So instead of just scanning through and stopping at some point, what if we were able to visit um, parts of the index where we know there are good things? And the idea here is to build a cluster skipping index. So you take your document corpus, you cluster the documents, you build a, a little index for each of those clusters, and that clustering is done by topicality, for example. You can do some reordering to optimize the space consumption of those little indexes, and then you essentially glue those back together. And what that gives you is a cluster skipping index where you know where this slice of documents are, you know where this slice of documents are, and you know where this slice of documents are. So then we can do priority-based query processing. So just like in the example before, now we have these ranges we can pass the query to a priority algorithm which tells us the order in which we should visit things and it says, okay, go to the gold section first. So we go and run the query on the gold section and that took 35 milliseconds. So we might say, okay, we still have time to do another section. Let's go to the next one. That's the green one. We go and process those. Now we've done 90 milliseconds and we might say, okay, that's enough. We might uh, blow the budget if we keep going. However, there are still many documents unprocessed, the blue and the red range here, but most answers are possibly collected already because of the way we prioritize where we visit the index. And so if you think about this in a different way, what typically happens when we score uh, documents through document order index is that we have a heap entry threshold which grows as we process and the higher that threshold is, the more difficult it is to score stuff. And so the higher the threshold is, the more skipping we do and the faster retrieval gets. So if we clustered our index, I'll just go back and forth here, we might change the behavior of the retrieval model. But we can do better because then we can actually even visit ranges in a specified order. And as you can see, that results in less things overall being scored. So a few notes on our experimental setup. We, we looked at a couple of collections, but here I'm only going to present Clueweb 9b, which has 50 million English web documents. We had 123 clusters from our index. Um, we used 5,000 queries of varying length uh, on a 32-core machine with 512 gigs of RAM. Everything was run in memory. We measured latency in milliseconds. And um, for quality measurement, we used RBO, which is a top-weighted overlap um, metric and we compute that against the exhaustive ranking. So we're essentially seeing how close to the exhaustive ranking we can get. So in the full processing space, we have JAS, which is a score at a time, anytime ranking system. We also have an Oracle, which is if we knew which ranges to visit in which order, um, we would you know, visit them in the right order and then stop once we've found all the results. And then we have our two uh, instantiations of the anytime 
approach. And basically we see that we can achieve an up to 10 times speed up on the current state of the art in uh, any time uh, ranking. So we also looked at um, increasing the SLA to be more and more strict. So in this figure, a red box means that the SLA was violated uh, and a blue box means that the SLA was met. Uh, and so the top figure here is showing the time in milliseconds and the bottom figure is showing quality uh, with respect to the exhaustive. And so what you can see is as the SLA gets stricter and stricter, we're able to continue meeting the SLA, but of course with some drop in quality here. We also looked at scalability and found that our approach does scale very well with uh, the number of threads. Uh, and of course, the stricter the SLA, the more throughput inquiries per second we can achieve uh, because the system is, is shedding uh, the amount of work it needs to do. So uh, the conclusion and takeaways here, we're able to make document at a time retrieval systems act in an anytime manner, which is something we weren't able to do up until now. And that allows us to improve latency without significantly sacrificing quality. We can have much better control over latency and effectiveness trade-offs. And our approach is even sensitive to extraneous circumstances. So for example, if the system is under a high load, um, our algorithm is adaptive to that and can start shedding you know, um, the amount of work that needs to be done in order to keep on top of the load. Uh, and it uses less resources than baseline techniques. The cons are, of course, that it requires extra work during indexing. Uh, the quality depends on how you prioritize the, the order in which you visit the clusters. And there's a modest but not a zero space overhead. So, but wait, there's more. Um, we, we urge you to go and check out the paper if you're interested, but there's a whole lot of other extra experiments. So thank you for your time. I uh, hope you enjoyed the talk and please go and check out the paper and send us any questions you might have. Cheers.